Hey, soul survivors, we're going to talk about intergenerational trauma, what it is and how it affects us. It can help us to heal, to understand ourselves, to understand the people around us and why things happen the way they do. So intergenerational trauma refers to the transmission of traumatic experiences and their psychological, emotional, and behavior impacts across generations. Now, they did a rat study where they would shock the rat's feet and then spray some cherry blossom scent. So they continued doing this. And over a period of time, the rats became conditioned that they would feel pain and they associated it with the cherry blossom scent. So they stopped shocking the rats. And then the rats would just smell the spray and they would skittish into a corner. So over time, they continued doing this. And then the rats had babies. Those babies, the first generation, just on the scent, would skittish off into the corner. They had no experience of the trauma. And what's interesting is the babies of those babies also did it. So they saw it go at least two generations deep. And it suggests that the trauma experienced by one generation can affect the subsequent generations, even if they did not directly experience the traumatic events themselves. So here's how intergenerational trauma can affect individuals and communities. There's biological and genetic factors. There's research that suggests that trauma can cause changes in gene expression and the functioning of the nervous system. These changes can be passed down through generations, potentially increasing the vulnerability to mental health disorders such as anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder. They also have done studies of trauma in the womb. And if the mother is stressed or if it's a traumatic birth, that when the baby is born, it'll have higher levels of cortisol, which is the stress hormone. So they already see the world as stressful and they go into survival mode. It's just a difference in, in that level of cortisol. So the psychological and emotional impact, this type of intergenerational trauma can result in a range of psychological and emotional issues. Individuals may experience heightened levels of stress, hypervigilant, difficulty regulating emotions, and they can also struggle with low self-esteem, a negative worldview, and a sense of mistrust in relationships. Trauma can also influence behavior patterns across generations. So for example, people may adopt coping mechanisms such as substance abuse, um, self-harm or avoidance, which they learn from their traumatized parents or grandparents. This can perpetuate a cycle of dysfunctional behaviors within families. And intergenerational trauma can affect entire communities and cultures. It can disrupt family dynamics, erode trust, and strain relationships between generations. Trauma can also shape cultural norms, values, and collective memory, influencing how a community responds to stressors and perpetuating cycles of violence or abuse parenting and attachment. Trauma can impact parenting styles and the parent-child attachment relationship. Individuals who have experienced trauma may struggle with connecting emotionally to their children, leading to difficulties in providing nurturing and secure environments. This can further contribute to the transmission of trauma across generations. And they've even seen um, with, uh, you know, people who've gone through the Holocaust or wars that it is trickled down into the offspring. So historical and social political context, intergenerational trauma can be rooted in historical events such as genocide, war, colonization, and systemic oppression. Historical traumas experienced by a particular group can continue to influence subsequent generations affecting their identity, cultural practices, and overall well-being. So we do need to make sure that we understand that not all individuals who experience trauma will pass it on intergenerationally. The transmission of this type of trauma depends on various factors that include the severity, the chronicity of the trauma, the level of support and resilience within the family or community, and also access to resources for healing and recovery. So I definitely wanted to bring up that rat experiment which is quite interesting where it shows the generational. Um, there was a guy speaking about his traumatic birth that he was a C-section baby. And he felt um, he was, he would always sit in like a fetal position almost, you know? And uh, he was saying that 
he felt it was because he felt trapped and wasn't able. He was upside down. He was breech. And um, as soon as he started healing, he started changing his posture. So some of the things that we do, uh, we don't always know why, but sometimes we can actually trace it back to little things that might have happened within our family or might have happened within our birth. I know I told you guys I wanted to do research because I was supposed to be a twin and my twin died in utero and my mom was really stressed. I never moved. And is that some of how my personality was shaped? Some of the ways that uh, I have to learn how to deal with certain situations because it's a high stress thing. Um, very interesting. And if you guys like the trauma series, I will continue doing it. Um, because if you're trauma informed, it can help you relate to people, understand people. It'll change the way that you speak so that you can show compassion. Uh, sometimes we show compassion, but it's not always in the right way that we have to um, speak to their need. And sometimes we have that empathy, but our empathy um, might need to be adjusted on somebody else's need. I hope that was helpful. And one-on-ones are available. Topic requests are always welcome.